Hey guys, welcome back to Buck Pole. This is David. And in this video, as in most videos, I'm going to show you how to do something. I'm not giving you my opinions. But in this video, I'm going to show you how I take the windows that I nor that I made that I showed in a previous video, and I'm going to show you how I mount them. And I used to do it one way, and it was okay. But the way that I used to mount them was where they would overlap the top and the bottom. And that would actually cut down on the amount of window space that I would get. Well, and I used to use horizontal framing in here. Like this, instead of being kind of vertical, was a horizontal piece in here. It was a little bit more of a shooting shelf. But it didn't really work well because it would be so deep. And you would end up getting a bunch of snow and rain and stuff like that inside the window. Well, Brett Morovitz, another guy on YouTube, came out with a way, and I'm basically taking something similar to what he was doing. I don't like the thin frames, so I adapted it to a full frame window to show you guys how you can do full frame blinds and yet still incorporate his window design into those blinds. So what I went ahead and did was I pop riveted it like I would normally. You can check out my other video, like I said, on how I assemble the windows. And then I set it up in here and I put three eighths inch blocks in for shims. So that gives me enough height. I went through and I pre-drilled all my holes and I've attached two screws so far. Now, this gives me a border on the outside edge. This piece of plexi is a little tight side to side, but it'll still work because it's got plenty of movement. Top and bottom, it's roughly three eighths of an inch from the top, three eighths of an inch from the bottom. The sides I'm pushing probably closer to about an eighth of an inch on each side. Um, he recommends a quarter inch and I, I think a quarter inch would be the best because if your hinges are off just a little bit it, it might mess with your stuff a little bit one thing that I have noticed I'm going to definitely keep the pop rivet heads to the inside of the glass so when you install it on here make sure that your hinge is facing up and like I said put a washer on the back as a backer because that will add strength to it and it will keep your plexi from cracking out but then Let's go ahead and put in these last two screws. Now, one thing I did notice, I did have to put it in a little bit of a downward angle because of how high it lifts this. So you'll have to watch that with your hinges. If your hinges aren't very big, it may become an issue. Um, and you may have to, like I said, I want to say this is 3 8 inch space just because I want to say that 3 8 inch plywood in there. So it's got a little bit more space to it than you would normally think you would have. Now, if I take that and go like this, and I pull, I mean, I don't hear a hinge creaking, squeaking, anything, and it goes all the way until the washer head hits. So, there you go. Um, I'll bring you back in just a little bit, and I'll show you how he uh, finishes the inside of it, and we'll go over that as well. So, give me just a second, and we'll, we'll get the rest of this completely squared away for you guys. Now, what I'm going ahead and I'm doing now is getting passed by a truck that's making a bunch of noise going down the road of course not that's out of the way putting in screws up here i put a piece of uh two by four in here to basically keep that window from pushing back out too far because i want it to stop when it hits the edge of that window and i'm gonna get this turned around for you let me get some stuff out of the way here first I don't want that going up too far because I don't want it breaking. Now, you'll see that's pressed up against there nice and tight. And what he does is he takes This garage weather stripping right here and he cuts it to size and he puts it in here so I'm gonna get this cut to size and installed and then I'll see if it needs to be trimmed or not and then we'll go from there and I'll show you kind of how he does that I'm thinking I might keep the full flap on here just because like I said I got a little bit more gap top and bottom than what he had and I'm thinking that'll work out better for me so let's get these cut 
cut the length. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is got it flipped around, got that board mounted on the back. Cut this to length. I did pre-drill some holes. I was looking at the height and definitely think that keeping it would probably be good because where the washers come out is pretty close to the height. So we're going to go like this. scaring me is the fact that this doesn't want to stay put. And I'm worried about not having enough tension on it in all honesty. I mean that one looks pretty good. That one looks pretty good. I'm wondering if maybe I didn't just bad luck hit something I wasn't supposed to, like another screw. So we'll put it at a bit of an angle and see if that helps maybe. Or I may have to finish that one off when I get it in there a little closer. And I can get the inside done. The rest of it looks like it's pretty good. There's a little bit of a lip on the edge here, top and bottom. And that's kind of nice because that'll allow me to be able to caulk around here and seal that up a little better. Seems like it's sealed pretty good around these washers. Um, I may take a heat gun just to kind of form it a little bit if I'm worried about any little cracks in here or something. I think that might add to it a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to frame out the rest of this. We'll get it spun around and loosened, and I'll show you um, how it actually turns out. But you'll be able to see from there how well it seals up, actually. Okay. Well, as you can see here, we've gotten the two sides done. Got them trimmed up to size. This one I still have a little bit tight. I may have to take just a hair or more off, but for the most part, pretty simple, straightforward. It is what it is. Now, I have learned going like this and kind of raking it along seems to help the best. Otherwise, worst case, you may have to notch this piece right here, just a hair with the saw. Don't know if you guys can see that, but cut this corner out. Because remember, this strip, when it's laying on the bottom, covers up that piece right there. So I'm going to go back over to the cirque saw and I'm going to take a little piece out. Otherwise, I may uh... actually... grab a hold of one of these and take advantage of my oscillator and just kind of notch that little corner out top and bottom so that it kind of slides together nicer. We'll see how that works. So bring it back to that in just a second. That definitely is the ticket guys. Notching out those corners a little bit really helps the fitment down in the bottom corners on these and gives me just enough room still that I've got a decent looking seal area and I'm going to be going back and caulking this anyways and then caulking around the outside of it too uh, so we can weather seal it up as much as possible but let me toss a couple screws in here quick I mean the biggest thing making sure you keep positive pressure on that uh, seal when you do it so that it keeps that seal nice and tight to the window I don't know. I'm kind of a fan of keeping the extra, the extra there and not trimming that down. So we'll see once we get them opened up and how much we kind of like that idea or not. I kind of like because it covers up the rivets on the bottom really well. But we'll bring it back once we get it flipped around. Well, we've got all the sides framed out on it. Seems like it's a good tight seal. I do have one screw that's kind of a pain down here in the corner. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but... When I turn it, I'm sure you'll be able to see it. Uh, it doesn't want to quite go in, and I've got too much angle on it pushing back. I'm guessing it hit another screw in there. So we'll work around that when we get that far, but let's get this turned around and see where we're at.
Okay. Let's get you centered up here. Seems like there's a lot of positive pressure against this. It's definitely a tight fit. We may have to put one board on each side to uh, hold it down to seal it up, but let's get these two screws out of there. And then we'll see how many little blocks we're gonna have to put in in order to hold it in place. But I mean, it really has some positive pressure to it, which is good because that helps to seal well. And when we bring that down, like I said, I really like how it covers up these rivet heads and doesn't really allow anything come to come down in there. And then when you push it back up, I mean, it doesn't make much noise. I mean, my siding's making more noise than the window itself is. But I definitely uh, have to hand it to him. He, he has a great idea, and I'm going to definitely link his channel down below for you guys to watch. Um, if you haven't seen how I make the actual first part of the window, go back and check out the video. I'll try to link it up in the top for you to be able to make this window set up. And then from there, uh, it should be pretty good. You can check out my other videos too on how I actually assemble these in the field and stuff like that as well. So thanks for watching guys. Good luck hunting and enjoy time in the outdoors with your family and friends.